بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد A believer obeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all conditions but human nature is to obey Allah to turn to Allah only when one needs Allah Allah does not need us the deen of Allah does not need us we need Allah we need the deen of Allah That's why Ibn Rajab Hanbali rahmatullahi will say Man amala Allah bit taqwa wa ta'ati fi hali rakhaihi that whoever obeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and is met what Allah is that you worship Allah in affluence in luxury then آمله الله باللطف والإعانة في حال شدته. Allah will treat the servant. Allah will aid the servant. Allah will assist this person when there are difficulties and hardships. So in easy we can obey Allah. Then Allah can help us and assist us when there are obstacles and difficulties. So worship of Allah should not be restricted. To when we need Allah. In all conditions we need to learn to turn to Allah, to obey Allah, to speak to Allah, to complain to Allah for our problems as well. Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah you say, لِلشَّكْوَى ثَلَاثَةُ مَرَاتِبُ When you need to speak to Allah, when you need to speak to complain to somebody, there are three stages. أَخَسُّهَا أَن تَشْكُوَ اللَّهِ إِلَىٰ خَلْقِهِ and the worst of complaints is when you complain to the creation about the Creator. وَآلَاهَا أَن تَشْكُوَ نَفْسَكَ إِلَيْهِ And the best of complaints is when you complain about yourself to Allah. وَأَوْسَتُهَا أَن تَشْكُوَ خَلْقَهُ إِلَيْهِ And the middle route is when you complain to Allah about the creation. So we got one opportunity, we need to get this right. This, this dunya is a, a mara of the akhirat. We will see the fruits in the year after. Salma ibn Dina rahimahullah used to say, Ma ahbabta ay yakuna ma'aka fil akhirati faqaddimhu al-yawm. What you love, what you desire to witness in the akhirah, whatever you want to enjoy in the akhirah, send it forward now. The sadaqah that you're doing now, you'll see the fruits. The amal that you are doing now, you will see the fruits. The sacrifice you are giving now, you will see the fruits. The taqwa that you are enjoying in, you will see the fruits. وَمَا كَرِهْدَ يَكُونَ مَعَكَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ فَتْرُكُ الْيَوْمِ And whatever you despise and you dread that should accompany you in akhirah, then stay away from it now, abstain. If you don't abstain from the ghost of guna now, it may haunt one in akhirah. So this world is a mirror. And when a person does not make effort on tarbiyah, then they go so deep in darkness, then a person cannot even see the darkness they are in. Like nowadays, somebody owes you money, you just phone them to remind them that you're owing me for the last five years. I needed to pay my zakat. I just want to calculate the amount. And any idea when you will settle this debt, so they become very upset and abrupt. So you didn't do anything wrong. They did the wrong, but it's a problem. You know I will pay you. Why are you hassling me? You think so I'm going to run away with your money? So likewise, when we're doing good as well, then people become very apprehensive and, and they start attacking you. So Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu used to say, Kafa bil mar'i ithman ay yuqala lahu Consider yourself a sinner, a transgressor, when somebody tells you, Ittaqillah fayaghdab You tell him, Fear Allah. Stay away from this guna, it's wrong. What happens? He becomes ex upset becomes infuriated and he says, Alayka nafsak, worry about yourself. You don't have better things to do. Why are you telling me? Worry about your own family. So, this kafiyat is very dangerous. 
On the contrary, when a person reaches the climax of tarbiyah, then they are happy that people will bring their flaws to their notice. They will be happy with the decision of Allah and not only good decisions. We are not happy when people praise us alone, but we are happy when people take out our faults. We are not happy when Allah gives us a lot and dunya is going right, but when things go wrong, then what happens? So when we go in difficulties and we fail. Ulama, the mashayikh, what fiqh, what understanding gave the sulaha? One of the, ah the salaf used to say, Inni adu Allah fi hajatin. When I'm in need, I make dua, sallallahu subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fa'idha a'tani iyaha farihtu. So when I make dua, and Allah accepts my dua, I become happy. Wa'idha lam yudhini. And when Allah doesn't accept my dua, farihtu mi'ata marra. I become happy a hundred times more. Why? لِأَنَّ الْأُولَىٰ إِخْتِيَارِي Because when I made dua and my dua got accepted, that was my desire. What I thought so was good for me. But when my dua was rejected, that's إِخْتِيَارُ الله. That was the choice of Allah, the Alam, the Al-Ghuyub, the being that knows the unseen, that knows what's best for us. So adopting taqwa and getting the ta'aluq with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala amongst the fawaid of taqwa number 24 is Allah will remove all difficulties more evil that will afflict a person. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu in tattakullah yaj'al lakum furqana wa yukaffir ankum sayyiatikum Likewise, وَيُنَجِّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ بِمَفَازَتِهِمْ Allah will deliver those who adopt taqwa to their places of success. لَا يَمَسُّهُمُ السُّ No evil, no harm will come close to the friends of Allah. وَلَا هُمْ يَهْزَنُونَ And they will have no grief. So the difficulties of dunya, the terror of qiyamah, the grief, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect one. So through this taqwa ya, a person is opening a door to the khazan of Allah, the door and the treasure of his hifaza. Like a person who knows us to, how to ask Allah, how to obey Allah, how to make happy Allah, then he'll able to take from Allah in dunya and akhirat. When you become the beloved of Allah, then Allah looks after you. Like a son who is obedient, now all his needs the father gives it. Besides that, any harm that's going to come to the son, the father will make sure he'll protect that son. From the son who knows how to ask his father, how to obey his father, how to make his father happy, and the father sorts his needs, we need to learn how to make Allah happy and to fulfill the needs of Allah. Then Allah Himself, Rabbul Alameen, will look after us. But we have to strive in that direction. What do I need to do? What do I, what do I need to ask? What amal I need to do? We need to be restless all the time. Any person can draw from the khazan of Allah. Like how drawing from makhluk, there's an incident mentioned that one of the kings once was going to travel to see his kingdom and his entourage was traveling and he made an airline that anybody who can say any fascinating appealing statement I will give you 400 coins so as he was traveling he seen a elderly man in his 90s and he was planting an olive tree so the king said Limada takhri sajaratan zaitun why you are planting these olive trees where it needs 20 years to see the fruits wa anta ajuz you over your 90s and uh, the the cover is close to you you close to the cover so the farmer said that as-sabiquna zar'u our elders predecessors they planted wa nahnu hasadna and we harvested so we will plant and our next generation the future will harvest so the king was amazed and he said, Ahsanta, these are beautiful words and 400 coins, gold coins were given to him. So the old man smiled. So the king said, Limada ibtasamta, why have you smiled? 
So he said that the zaytun tree, the olive tree, gives fruits after 20 years. وَالشَّجَرَةِ أَثْمَرَتْ الآن. But my tree gave fruits now. So the king again was amazed and he said, Ahsanta, wonderful, give him the 400 coins. So he took the 400 coins and he smiled again. So the king said, وَلِمَاذَا ibtasamta? Again you smiled. So he said, the olive tree gives fruits once a year, مَرَّةً فِي السَّنَةً وَالشَّجَرَةِ أَثْمَرَتْ مرتين. A normal tree will get fruits once a year. Today I am getting fruits for the second time. I've seen the fruits twice. So the king was amazed again. He said, Ahsanta, wonderful, wow. Give him the 400 coins. And the king rushed quickly away from the farmer. So the minister was there. He asked the king, Limada taharrakta bisuratin. O king, you rushed and you ran away quickly from there. So the king said, you know, if we had to stay there till the morning, إِذَا جَلَسْتِ إِلَى الصَّبَاءِ If we had to stay there till the morning, then the entire treasury would have become exhausted. The entire, this old man was so wise, he would have exhausted the entire treasury. So this is makhluk taken from makhluk when we know what to say. Imagine Allah's treasures which are unlimited. Allah has taught us through His Nabi how to draw from Allah's khazanas. They say well, there was a delegation of wolves. Approximately 100 wolves came to Medina Munawwara. And they came with a request So, Nabi salam heard out the wolves and told the Saba that they have a request that from your animals stipulate an amount, stipulate an amount which you will dedicate for the wolves. So if you want, we will uh, stipulate an amount and you will give them فَمَا أَخَذَ فَوَا رِزْقُهُ So Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, مَا تَدِبَ أَنفُسْنَا لَوْ بِشَيْنِ That we don't want to give them anything. So Nabi Alayhi Salaam uh, made an ishara, he gestured with his uh, three fingers that they can leave now. That they can leave now. So imagine a delegation of wolves coming to seek their quota. And when Saba did not agree, then the wolves left and they left such in the riwayat, it is mentioned فَوَلَّا وَلَهُ awa That they left and they were howling, they were howling because they came with a request. So such power Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had kept in deen, the delegations came to Sahaba. Hazrat Safina radiallahu anhu who was the freed slave of Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam said we were traveling on one of the expeditions the ship became shipwrecked and I grabbed onto a piece of plank wood and I came to a forest I came to some island and uh, I seen a lion فَأَقْبَلَ إِلَيَّ يُرِيدُنِي So it came as if it was going to attack me so I addressed the lion. I said, Ya Abu Harith, Ana Mawla Rasulillah. I said, I am the freed slave of the Nabi of Allah. Ra'sahu. So as if he lowered his head and he came closer to me and continued nudging me with its shoulder. And uh, as it nudged me with its shoulder, it started taking me to the direction where I needed to go and then it purred and it made a gesture and the Sahabi says I interpreted as it was making farewell, it was budding me farewell. In one way why it came, it came with its tail wagging, it came what its tail wagging and it brought me to my destination to the clear road where the Jamaat was it was a guide, it was a rehbar. Today we cannot even guide ourselves, forget our wives and children. 
Sahaba animals guided them. Animals came under their control. We cannot control our family. Forget our own selves. Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu once was traveling and he seen a group of people and there was a crowd standing there on the road. So he asked, what is the matter with these people? Ma balu ha'ula. So they replied, Asadun ala tariq qad akhafahum. There is a lion on the road frightening people. So Zad Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu got off his camel, walked to the lion. Hatta akhada bi udhunihi fa'arakaha. He grabbed it. By the ear, he grabbed a wild lion today. We're trying to get baby cubs, animals, and to groom them, tigers, etc., to, to rear them so that they become tamed. What power Allah put in the hearts? What power Allah gave Sahaba? He grabbed it by the ear. Then he twisted the ear, slapped it by the nape. He slapped it by the nape. وَنَحَاهُ عَنِ التَّرِيكِ He moved the animal from the road. And then he addressed the people and said, مَا كَذَبَ عَلَيْكَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ The Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke the truth. إِنَّمَا يُسَلَّتُ عَلَى بْنَا آدَمْ إِنَّمَا يُسَلَّتُ عَلَى بْنِ آدَمَ مَا خَافَهُ إِبْنُ آدَمْ that only that which man fears will be given the upper hand over him. And if he fears none besides Allah, Allah will not allow anything else to gain an upper hand over him. Then he said that man is also handed over to that which he entertains hope in. If he puns his hopes in none other than Allah, Allah will not hand him over to anyone else. Lam yakilhu ila ghayrihi. Allah will not hand him over to anyone else. So Allah's protection for the muttaqeen. Hazrat Asim bin Thabit, he made dua that he will never surrender to the custody of the kafir. In some narrations, that uh, neither he would touch any mushrik nor any mushrik would ever touch him. So, at that point in time, he had killed one of the leaders of the Quraysh in the Battle of Badr, and the Quraysh sent some people to bring the portion of his body to them so that they could recognize him. The mushrikin went and they wanted to cut off his head, they wanted to amputate his head. فَبَعَثَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ أَدَّبْرَ تَثِيرُ فِي هُجُوهِ الْقَوْمِ وَتَلْدَغُهُمْ Allah Jalla Jalalu sent swarms of wasps that protected him and stung these people and it prevented them from severing his head and he was known as Hamidu Dabr he was given the nickname Hamiyad Dabri, the one who was protected by the swarm of wasps. So even wasps Allah sent to protect Sahaba. Once Marwan sent some people to Hazrat Sa'id bin Zaid anhu that a woman had claim against him. Her name was Arwa binte Uwais. So Hazrat Sayyid exclaimed that these people think that I've wronged her when I've heard Nabi Islam say that the one who usurps even our hand span of land, that all seven earths will be placed as a yoke around his neck on the day of Qiyamah. So he made dua, O oh Allah, if she's lying, let her not die until she turns blind, until she turns blind and make her grave a well. So the blood ibn Umar Darawi says, that by Allah, Allah, this woman turned blind before her death and one day as she left her house, she fell into a well and it became her grave. It became her grave. The Amal for today is that we should abstain from asking people any need we have turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-yadul ulya khayrun min al-yadis sufla. 
the upper hand is always better, more noble than the lower hand. وَالْعُلْيَا هِيَ الْمُتَعَفِّفَةِ And the upper hand is the one who is ab abstaining from begging, the one that is protected, the one that is preserved, the one that is generous. وَالسُّفْلَا هِيَ السَّائِلَةِ And the lower hand is the hand that begs, that is needy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq of making amal. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا نِلْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ